<laughs> I have to adjust this chair. My wife comes out here and sits and either pushes it back or forward, or we need to maybe <laughs> winter's coming so the plants will grow back a little bit because they've grown out all over the place. And it's a tiny porch, but praise the Lord, I like it. And uh, I enjoy what God has given for me to touch base with my <laughs> nature side that I like, you know, and learn from as I put my hands in dirt and see plantings of the Lord grow or just see my hands get dirty. <laughs> or see what overwatering can do. <laughs> or underwatering. But everything we go through every day at the moment of our life if we were quite able to connect the dots inside and just kind of like make all the the little connectors that are in your brain that are just you know so far apart that the little zip goes across a spark and that causes you know a receptor to initiator and a receptor to connect and that gives us thought and the thought becomes a memory and the memory connects with what we've remembered and we've been infused with by way of some kind of personal experience and then it makes our brain remember and interprets it and causes us to create an image and then the image becomes something that we know and then we say <laughs> that's thought process but more than that something else happens beside this physical reality that god causes in a soul that's inside that likewise once he's placed his spirit in there then there's a three-partite experience going on besides the physical representation of what an electrode can do between a initiator and a receptor and the chemical in between that conducts it because that's three parts in order for you to have a thought the same thing is true about body soul and spirit in order to be born again god uses circumstance inspiration and his word to bring about maturity and the reason he does that is because he wants your circumstances to fit and you able to see it in his word so that you could take from his word and give it to another and share the same that you learned from it to someone else so that you would be connected in initiating their understanding of what God is doing by being a comforter to them. You could be literally in some ways participating with the Holy Spirit to another person sent as a comforter not a convictor sorry <laughs> god can do that on his own but likewise you could be jesus as he has come in the flesh died rose again came that we would be born again of the spirit of god and that we would have him living inside us because he promised in the book of revelation that behold i send written to christians behold i stand at the door and knock if any man open the door and come in i will commence up with him and he will literally knock on the door of your house walk in the door open up my sliding glass door sit down and have coffee with me in the morning <laughs> which is what he's doing with us but bringing it back to your circumstance if you're going through it you're going through it for a reason it's not because you're being beat up but it's because you're learning so that you could turn around and take what you're learning and give it to someone else grace for grace mercy for mercy love for love I'd say judgment for judgment, but you're not supposed to do that. So you see, judge not. So let's skip that one. And conviction for conviction? No, let's let the Holy Spirit do that. But rather, give grace for grace, love for love. The comfort with which you were comforted, you are meant to give that comfort unto another. And God gives us those experiences so that we can be the literal salvation or the salt or the comfort or the strength to someone who is broken and in need and desperate because we recognize that we too have been there and it's not but for the grace of god there go i but because of god's grace i go there so that i can be there to share with them the same grace that i was given and the same forgiveness i was given and the same consolation that i was given for with that then i have become likewise a son of god that god has created in me his kingdom to be able to share it with another to be able to care for a person in the name of the lord with the same effectiveness that jesus had because jesus is in me and he is speaking through me and he is touching that person in a very intimate and personal way and you get to participate in that if you choose to in streams in the desert 
we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. The best things of life come out of wounding. Wheat is crushed before it becomes bread. Incense must be cast upon the fire before its odors are set free. The ground must be broken with the sharp plow before it is ready to receive the seed. It is the broken heart that pleases God. The sweetest joys in life are the fruits of sorrow. Human nature seems to need suffering to fit it for being a blessing to the world. People look at me today and they can see a healthy, exuberant, kind of goofy kind of guy. You know, that's pretty much happy, you know. I'm, I am me, you know. Such as I am, I am. And such as I'm not, that's God in me, you know, that's making me really happy. But people don't know the man that spent 10 years in VA hospitals lying for almost a year at one time in a hospital bed suffering and dying that had gone down to 89 pounds. People don't see the man who's been broken repeatedly over and over again in emotional ties that because he was raised in a way that identified his emotive side that he was able to be so caring that he was not able to deal with those emotions and that it would break his soul and cause him to turn to the only place that could make him whole. People haven't seen that as a Christian he experienced all these things that most people give up in order to be saved and then go on unto righteousness but that as a, as a saint I became likened unto those things that people would normally not do because I'd never seen them or known them and the foolishness of my own actions caused such circumstances in my life to create in me the tenderness, the mercy, the kindness, the gentleness, the exceeding kindness. There's another word that God used in the scriptures and I can't think of it right now, but the exceeding immutable, if you would, capability of God to empathize with our suffering in such a way that he would be so filled with it that he would wipe away our tears, that he would be so caring in that way to reach out and touch you. God will break you, but he will make you. And if he's going to make you into the image of his son, he's going to crucify you. Because it's not the people's hands and feet, or it's not the people's it's not the people that put Jesus on the cross, but it was God's hand. It, it's not the people that nailed Jesus to the cross, but it was God who nailed his hands and feet. God caused Jesus to be there by allowing him the privilege of choosing to participate in the plan of salvation for you. He died so that we might live. He was broken, even as we are broken, so his compassion could be poured out upon us and we could be likewise made that same compassion for the world not just to be caring about it because the world is passing away in the lust thereof and personally God's going to renovate it but we could care about people enough we could care about the sinner and the saint enough that we could say that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth him should not perish but have everlasting life and whether you realize it or not, God so loved the world that he gave you that whosoever would believe in Jesus would have everlasting life. You are the one, and God's going to make you into the image of his son.